Plates Bin Migrate is a workload management solution that seamlessly migrates entire server workloads between physical, virtual and cloud platforms in any direction. The term workload refers to a Windows or Linux operating system along with everything installed on it, its applications, its data and configuration. A workload is treated by Platespin as a single entity and may reside on a physical, virtual or cloud platform. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the process of performing a semi-automated migration. This method is most commonly used for migrations to physical hardware, but it can also be used for migrations to virtual platforms such as Zen Server or any platform that supports boot from ISO. As you can see, I'm using VMware Workstation for this demonstration. Before I can start a semi-automated migration, I need to prepare a target server with compute resources sufficient to accommodate the source workload that will be migrated. The memory and processor allocation does not have to match the source workload. It's important to be aware that the volumes on the target workload need to be slightly larger than the corresponding volumes on the source. The minimum additional space required on each volume is 23 megabytes. I'm adding the second volume, again making it slightly larger than the D drive of the source machine, and also configuring the target to boot from the plate spin replication environment that I downloaded earlier from microfocus.com. The target workload is temporarily booted from this ISO image during all replication activities in order to give it a presence on the network that can communicate with the source workload. Now we have a source and target workload, we can begin. We boot the target workload with the plate spin ISO and select the appropriate option from the menu, depending on whether the workload has SAN attached volumes connected by fiber channel over ethernet and or multipathing enabled. This target has neither, so we'll select the first option. When the Linux kernel has loaded, we're prompted to register the target with the plate spin migrate server and configure an IP address. If the server has multiple network cards, we can select which one to use. The network configuration must allow the target to communicate with the plate spin migrate server via HTTPS and also with the source workload on a single replication port, which by default is TCP 3725. The target downloads an agent from the plate spin server and registers its inventory. The target workload is now prepared for migration, so we can now discover the source workload that will be migrated to it. This requires an IP address or host name and administrative credentials. A typical migration performed with the migrate client involves three distinct migration jobs, the first of which is a full replication. An incremental sync job replicates any changed data to the target, and after each of these jobs is run, the target workload may be tested. The third and final job is the cutover, in which the source workload is powered off and the target workload is powered on with production settings. It is only during this phase that there is any downtime or disruption to business services. This is usually short, measured in just a few minutes as you'll see later. When configuring the first replication and subsequent server syncs, you should select copy workload. Move is used later when performing the cutover. Windows servers are typically replicated using block-based transfer, but you can select file-based transfer if you wish to resize or defragment volumes during replication. Linux servers are replicated using block-based transfer only. We can define the end state of both the source and target workloads. I will leave both running so that the target workload can be tested immediately after replication. The data transfer can be compressed, throttled and encrypted if required, or scheduled for a later time. Because both source and target workloads will remain running at the end of the migration job, we need to change the hostname and IP address of the target temporarily. We can reassign the hostname and IP address to the target during the cutover if required. It's good practice to always change the IP address during replication activities to avoid a potential IP conflict with the source workload, 
even if the migration job is configured to power off the target. The target window services configuration enables you to change the start mode of services or Linux daemons on the target machine. This is useful, for example, if the source workload has a hardware agent that is not required to run on the target. The live transfer services configuration enables you to stop services and daemons on the source workload during the replication. It is good practice to define antivirus agents here as these can interfere with the replication process. In the drive configuration, you select which volumes will be copied and map them to the target disk infrastructure. System volumes must always be replicated, but application volumes are optional. This is to allow for SAN attached volumes that PlaySpin doesn't need to replicate. We can save the job for later or run it immediately and check job progress in the jobs view. The migration job will, of course, take some time, depending on the amount of data to be copied, the speed of the network and other factors. I've shortened the video for convenience. Now that the migration job is finished, the target workload has been booted into Windows and is ready for testing. It may be necessary to reactivate the Windows license depending on the type of migration and the type of license key on the source. We'll do this after the cutover. Everything looks OK, so we can power the target workload off in preparation for the next incremental replication and cutover. To perform another replication, we boot the target with the plate spin ISO again and register it to the migrate server as we did before. We can now configure the next migration job. In a production environment, we would create another copy job that performs an incremental replication. However, since this is a demo, I'm going to skip to cutover, so we select move workload instead. Since this is not the first replication, we can select server sync to copy only the changed volume blocks. The configuration of a move job is very similar to a copy, but there are some important differences. In a move job, PlateSpin will shut down the source machine, which allows its hostname and IP address to be reassigned to the target if required. As we switch from source to target, we usually want to be absolutely certain that there is no loss of application data. We can achieve this by configuring PlateSpin to shut down the application services prior to the final incremental replication. After the cutover, the source machine is powered off and the target machine is in production and has replaced the original server. High levels of automation and incremental replications keep application downtimes to a minimum during cutover, usually measured in minutes as you can see in the job report. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this video today and I hope you found it useful.